Good morning, Hillside. Why don't we go ahead and stand? We're glad you're here. Uh, buongiorno, buenos dias. Uh, what else do we want to say? Ohio uh, gozaimas. Glad you're here either in person, it's good to see your faces, or online. And we're going to get started as we gather together before our great God and Maker by praying. Dami's going to get us started. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for uh, another opportunity to be here in your midst today. Father God, we adore you because you've got a track record of keeping your word. Father Lord, let your word come into our hearts today. Let it revive our minds. Let us know you more, love you more, do your will more. And when your son comes to preach to us today, let whatever comes out of his mouth reflect the mindset of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
High within our hearts, high within our minds, yeah. yeah. If you're troubled, heavy hearted, come to Jesus and find your peace. If you're run down, yeah, empty handed, yeah. Come to Jesus and find your strength. Yes. Hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary, help for the hurting. He is, he is. Mending the broken, bearing the burden, all that you need. If you want to the darkness come to Jesus and find your way you want freedom yeah. need forgiveness come to Jesus and find his grace yeah. hope for the hopeless rest for the weary help for the hurting he is, he is. Man, the broken, bearing the burden, all that you need. Comfort and counsel, the Prince of Peace, author and maker of everything, defender, deliverer, King of Kings, He is, He is. Helper and healer forevermore, Savior and shelter through every storm. My refuge, Redeemer, and Lord of all. He is, he is, child of heaven, son of man, provider, protector, the great I am. Praise, yeah, 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 Jesus, you are so central. You are the center of who we are. Uh, we give that to you this morning. Uh, we lift you up together as we ought to, as we should. So in your name we pray, amen. I'm Randy Fishback, longtime member here at Hillside. Hey, I want to, us to come together as a family, because this is the Hillside family, and come together as a family and talk about a need, a need we don't talk about too often, but an update on our finances. And so if you guys will show that slide. So if you look at this slide, this is where we are through three quarters. We have a fiscal year that ends at the end of September, and this is where we are. And our shortfall at this point through three quarters is $87,000. And what's interesting, the projected shortfall is 150. And if you do the math and say there's one more quarter left and we're down roughly 90, then we should, should have a shortfall of 120. Why does it say 150? It says 150 because the biggest giving month is December, of course, with, with tax season and end of year giving. And so that, that you know, ship has already, already sailed back last December and, and we're struggling. We're thinking we're gonna be 150 behind. And this really impacts our ability to be light in the world, to do our to do our missions work, to do the, the things we do in the community, um, to love each other well, and, and all so many other ministries, even staffing levels and things like that. And we're coming up on the budget setting season. It's actually underway right now, and it's gonna occur through the month of July and August. And how those two months play out is going to um, sort of determine what we think we can take on. We'll have some steps of faith, but we'll also wanna be good stewards. And so, 
want everybody to really consider what their role in this might be. So first of all, for all of you faithful givers, just thank you, bless you, God bless you. It's just wonderful that people have adopted this church as their church home and have given so faithfully. And so that's really important that we thank you for doing this. And then we add this challenge. In fact, I'm gonna pray right now that for this need to be met um, through the rest of the fiscal year. So Heavenly Father, just would you meet us where we are right now? You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And we just ask right now that you would raise up your people um, to meet this challenge and, and uh, allow us to do so many good things in the world and, and steward our money well and be light in the world and uh, have all these touch points, God. We pray earnestly that you would touch hearts and, and meet this need, Lord. And we thank you that we know you will. You provide every good and perfect gift and, uh, and you want to be here for us. You are for us, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So last thing about that that I want to say is that we had a pastor here many years ago, back in the 80s, and he once told me, he said, um, I rarely pray for something that God, that I find that God is asking me to be the answer to. I don't have to spend time in prayer if God is asking me to be that answer, whatever the, the question is. And so um, already my wife and I have we're talking this morning about how we can participate in this need, and I hope you will do that and consider whether you are part of that answer. So that's it for the family business. Well, let's do more family business, actually. Um, we have Connect cards here. You are familiar with them, I'm sure, if you've been around for a while. The blue card, let us know if you've had any changes of address or you know, personal information or contact information. The orange card, you can give us a prayer request. We'd just love to hear from you. We'd love to be there for you. So uh, fill out the cards there in the seat back in front of you. And then after that, we have um, service in the park next Sunday. So there will be no service here. We'll be in the park. I feel like I can guarantee a warmer outing than May and June because it's a pretty low bar since those were really cold mornings. So um, it's going to be warmer next week. I, I guarantee it. I promise it. So meet in the park. Bring a blanket if you wish, a, a chair. Um, bring a snack or a lunch and stay around. There are going to be games and other things. If you're anxious about parking and you don't know how this works, go to Hillside's website. There's also information out in the information counter. You can get information on where to park and how to navigate that. Don't let that be a barrier. So we will all be in the park at, uh, at 10 o'clock next week. And then this Thursday, we have um, uh, dads and kids in the park uh, at Arbolato Park at, from 5 to 8, hot dogs, hamburgers, games, the whole bit. You bring your nephews, bring just whomever. I, I've got a daughter at this church. I was considering bringing her. Um, she's in Turkey right now, so it's probably not going to work out. But uh, bring, bring your kids. Give mom a break. This is put on by the men's ministries. And uh, just love to have a great time in the park at, at Arbolato. So all this, is, you can get information on everything I've shared in the, uh, in the bulletin, on the website, and other places. So please explore all those opportunities, and let's just uh, enjoy each other's company as a church. All right, I'm going to invite Pastor Wayne up, and I think you're, should I also invite uh, Carly and Sierra? Come on up. Yes. I'm up. All right. Okay, if you have kids at uh, Hillside, then you already know Carly and Sierra. And as we gather on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., uh, the kids are also gathering. About 45 of them, uh, aged nursery age through fifth grade, are also learning about Jesus and the way of life. They're singing songs to him and so forth. And if you have kids, you know that kids are the most valued treasure of any family. And that should be true of our church family as well, right? If we want to continue to reach younger families, if we want to help that next generation come to know and follow Jesus also, then we need to have a great kids ministry, right? What you do? Um, and, you know, the need for that is even greater as our culture, our surrounding culture that's also trying to impact our, our young people continues to drift farther from God. Um, so the stakes are high. The spiritual battle is real. And um, the good news is God knows that, and he's already provided us with two great leaders. And he's growing this thing that we call Hillside, 
He's advancing his kingdom here. This thing is bearing more fruit, it's growing, which means we have more need for more teachers, more great teachers, we already have some, and some more helpers. Um, This is mission critical, this is for all of us. Uh, This is the discipleship and outreach work that we need to do well. If we don't do this well, what are we doing, right? Uh, So Carly and Sierra are gonna tell you a little bit more about the specific needs. So as we prepare to open up a whole new service at nine o'clock, as you can see, we have some kids in the audience. We'd love to be able to get down into their own classes. Um, Ever since the flood of 2023, we we have taken that opportunity to open some more classes that would be... um, suited for each grade and giving our preteen kids their own space and our kindergarten kids, which are kind of like the kids on the outside of each age group. And we really wanted to give them their own space. So we took that and had some teachers step up and that was awesome. And we really want to be able to create that, recreate that at the nine o'clock that will, um, make it easier for families with flexibility to know that their kids are gonna have a class at either hour. So that's really our biggest desire right now is to open those spaces for families. And Sierra, do you wanna tell them our, Sierra made the slides, so I'm kind of thinking maybe she knows the exact. (laughs) Okay, so we have four main needs and four main classes. So zero to three, we need four helpers to commit to two times per month. Um, and that sounds like a lot, but you will have the opportunity to come to service. Even the days that you're serving, you will still be able to come to service. So you only have to help one, like one hour during that Sunday, two times per month, if that makes sense. Um, and then, so that's a zero to three. So that's like the nursery age babies to three years old. Eventually we're going to try to split that class, but for now it's zero to three. And then we have pre-K and K. So we again need four helpers to commit to two times a month, um, for a whole year basically Um, and then we have a first through third grade and then fourth through fifth grade and all of those classes we need four helpers so and that's just for the 11 o'clock service Uh, for the nine o'clock service we're going to try to um, need a little less so we'll have zero to three we need four helpers Uh, pre-k to k we need four helpers and then we're going to do first through fifth for the first service. So then we need four helpers for that. So it's a total of, we need 28 people to commit to serving during this amazing race ministry year. And it sounds like a lot to commit to twice a month. Uh, But again, you will not be missing service and you'll be pouring into the most valuable assets at Hillside, which are these kids. And if these kids aren't poured into, then there's no Hillside in 20 years. Or, I mean, yeah, so we really need you guys. If you have a passion for kids or if you feel God stirring in your heart right now, then let us know. We have some sign-up sheets today, right now, outside, if you guys want to sign up for one of those positions. So, And one more thing I just want to say, if you are maybe feeling open to it, but you're thinking, well, I'm not really a teacher. I don't even really know where I would go or what I would do. We will 100% find a spot for you. All you need at this point is willingness and that you like kids. You know, that like can grow into love. And they're a pretty lovable crew here. So one more thing (laughs) before I hand the mic over, Kids Camp is this week and Amazingly enough, in children's ministry that this happened, we have a full staff of people. So we would love if we have some more kids. So if you have kids, you have it. You can totally sign up tomorrow morning. It would be so much better if you do it this afternoon. You can hit the QR code in the lobby. It would just be less stressful for everyone. But you can still come in the morning. I won't say no. Um, And if you have friends, bring them. We're going to have the best time. Yeah. Yeah, invite, invite your friends. This is, this is outreach. This is not just for our kids. It's, it's outreach and so forth. All right, well, I'm going to pray us up here. Why don't we stand together and ask our Lord for his great provision. Uh, thank you, Father, for your goodness to us. Thank you that you love these children. Thank you that you love us. You call us your own, Lord God. And uh, we look to you uh, to provide for us what we need. And we ask that you would help all of us however you prompt us, however you lead us, to recognize that that is a blessing when you call us to serve. It's a blessing for us and for others, Lord God. Help us be quick to obey. Amen. Ushers are coming up. We're going to...
we can sit while we pass the plates. I'm going to pray here for, uh, for the offering. Um, yeah, Jesus, I was hearing about, we were hearing about um, kind of needs we have here um, at Hillside. And we love the work you get to do through us. That's something that just we get so blessed by um, to get to have that gracious opportunity. Um, and so uh, just uh, bless these offerings as we use wisdom uh, to know what to do with them. Um, and uh, yeah, just bless your work here. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen.
couldn't hurt it I don't deserve it Still you gave yourself away love of God Oh, it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you gave yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God gonna stay right here I'm just gonna wait here you're not going anywhere I'm not going anywhere I'm just gonna stay right here I'm just gonna wait here yeah. I'm yours you're mine my reward my delight The bridge to the vine, everything you want to find. Oh, my life, I abide in you. You're not, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Fear. Let your love quiet here. Let your love be near. You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Let your love quiet here. Let your love be near. I'm yours. You are mine. My reward. My Everything that I'm seeking, everything that I want, be my one desire, be my one desire. Everything that I'm seeking, everything that you're, you're my one desire, you're my one desire. Everything that I'm seeking, everything that I am yours, I am yours. You're my refuge, you're my strength, you're my rest, my hiding place. You're my refuge, you're my strength, I abide in you. You're my refuge, you're my strength, you're my rest, my hiding place. You're my refuge, you're my strength, I abide in you. You're my refuge, you're my strength, you're my rest. Bridge to the vine, everything. 
to yourself, calling us your own, Lord God. We thank you for bringing us into your life, Lord. Uh, we thank you that you are now beginning to flow through us and in us, Lord, yes. and make lasting change. We praise you for that. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to do a mixer now because this is a great opportunity for us to get to know each other better. So what you're going to do after I give you the question is you're going to find someone that you didn't come with and make sure you know each other's names, and then you're gonna answer this great question. So you may have to think back a little ways on this one, or if you're a kid, this is present life stuff. As a kid, uh, when the summer was coming to a close, and the school year approached, what did it feel like? Were you feeling dread or excitement? Dread or excitement or something in between? Go ahead and share your answer to that question, share your names, get to know each other better. Guess it's about time to come back. But I, I, I have to know. That's right. I got to know. This, this may be something you are hesitant to admit, but we, we got to know. Oh, we're here. I'm hearing feedback, huh? Uh-oh. Oh. If not, I can go to the other microphone. We'll see if we can get that under control. If not, oh, well, there we go. That's, that's good. Okay, we gotta, we got to know each other a little bit better here. This might be hard to admit to, especially if uh, you know, your secret feeling when school was rounding around was excitement. You might be embarrassed to admit that in this crowd, but we've got to find out how many people, right around this time of the year, School's right around the corner. Mom and dad are, are, are taking you to Mervyn's to get school clothes, okay? A new peachy folder. How many of you are feeling just dread? You're thinking, I wish summer would go for the rest of my life. Ah, uh, Joy and Jan. Ola, dread, don't want it. Wayne, a little bit of dread. Okay. You got to admit, Ida. Dread? You're a teacher. That's not right. You're a teacher. Okay, the rest of you, excitement. You, you'll own it. You were ready to go back. Okay, there you go. Anyway, good to have you here at Hillside. We're so glad. We're going to jump right into our passage this morning. Uh, it's 1 John 5, 1 through 5. You can find it in the message notes that you got when you came in. And uh, I invite you to follow along as I read just five verses. Listen to these verses. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is God's word to us today. He's going to speak today. Well, what is this passage 
basically about. As we try to zero in on John's main concern, it, it really helps us to remember the context. Remember what we have learned in this series. And of course, as we know, and we see this all the way along in this He Became a series, John's practical concern is supercharged love in the church. That's what he wants. That's what the Spirit of God wants for us at New Hillside. He wants supercharged love in this room. And we also know, because we've seen this all the way along throughout this series, that for John, taking into our hearts and minds the incarnation, which is the central truth of Christianity, that the eternal Son of God, who is with God from eternity, became a human being, became a flesh and blood human being, is what makes us capable of that supercharged love. That's the broad context. It's also the immediate context. If you're here a couple of weeks ago, you'll remember that the last two verses of the previous section are another ringing call. And we've had a bunch of these throughout 1 John. Another call for Christians everywhere, including the Christians right here in this room this family, to love each other. And to love each other not just in in words, but in life laid down style where we sacrifice for each other. Well, that context sort of gives us the clue for John's particular concern in these five verses. Now, uh, like John often is, John is coy here. He, He does not completely reveal his hand. And you could say that this passage that we have, these five verses, the sort of a, a little funnel cloud in the big funnel cloud of the whole book of First John. But I think when we read really closely, when we take each word uh, and, and look at it, sift it very closely, we discover that what John's burden is, and we discover that at the vortex is how it is that we can keep that love really flowing here in the church. So let, let's walk through the passage and let's see it. Well, after leading with the incarnation, and again, that doesn't surprise us, right? That's been John's burden throughout this book. John says that in the second half of verse one, that everyone who loves the father loves the father's other children as well. And then in verse two, he says that we can know that we love these other children. And and obviously he means uh, our Christian siblings, our brothers and sisters, by whether we are, verse two, loving God and obeying his commandments. In other words, he's saying that deep love for God is a a, a marker for love of each other, our Christian siblings. Now, let's think about this. It's possible that here John really only means to give us a test. Maybe he's giving us some kind of diagnostic test and it's possible that he's saying no more than this. If you wanna know that you love your brothers and sisters in the family, just see whether you love and obey God, okay? It's possible that's what he's saying. It's kind of what the verse is saying. I think he's saying more than that. I think that the test he's giving us includes an instruction. I think what he's saying is this. If you wanna fire up your love, For your brothers and sisters in the faith, fire up your love for God. And that that suggestive style is one that the New Testament writers often employ. Oftentimes, indicative statements, the biblical writers telling us what is contains an implicit imperative, something that we should do, kind of like Wayne talked about last week, joyfully and promptly. And I want to give you an example. Look at Ephesians 2.10. It's in your notes. I'm going to read it to you in a different version because it has uh, sort of a fresh ring to it. Listen to this verse. Paul says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Now think about that verse. Don't you think that we would be pretty clueless if the only thing that we were to get out of that statement is that it's somehow an FYI, a a for your information kind of statement. I mean, could God possibly be satisfied if reading that passage, Ephesians 2.10, if our only response were this, good to know, God. 
Very good to know. I've been created new in Christ to do the good works that you prepared in advance for me to do. So noted. Now will somebody pass the chips, okay? No way. That's not what he's saying. The indicative implies an imperative, which is this. He's saying, you know, beloved believers, beloved children of God, you who are now seated with Jesus in the heavenlies, you who are already someday to inherit a brand new world over which you will reign with Jesus himself, this is what you are to do. Seek out those good things. Seek them out and start to do them. Well, it's the same here with a passage, which means that the real meaning of verses one through two is this. He's saying very simply, to electrify love for our fellow believers, electrify love for God. And that's our first fill-in. That's verses one through two. In other words, to fire up love for our Christian siblings, which is what John wants. He wants a community of people who love each other who really care for each other, put themselves out for each other, and not resorting to assault when we're hurt or withdrawal when we're hurt, but loving each other, all right? Because he says, in verse one, and this is how another verse, version puts it, he says, everyone who loves the parent loves the child. And then moving down to verse three, John explains how we do that, how we electrify that love. Now listen to the verse again. He says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Again, we have an indicative statement here, right? We have a declarative statement. And again, we ask, is he just giving this uh, as an FYI? Is he just giving this to us so that we can collect some information? Is he sort of saying, you know, thought you might want to know that God's commandments are not burdensome, right? Just in case it comes up in Bible uh, trivial pursuit. Is that what he's doing? No, he's not. This is persuasion. And this is John's gentle push to take seriously everything that God has told us in his word in the interest of firing up love. First of all, uh, love for God as we experience his benevolent leadership in our lives. That's what we always discover when we obey God. We always discover he knows what's best. We always discover that he's, he's for us. And as we do that and our hearts swell, well, what happens? <laughs> we just discover that we love each other all the more. Now, circling back to verse three, look, look, look at that again. The second half has a very interesting line. I'm wondering if, if it got your attention when I read it. It says, and his commandments are not burdensome. Let me ask you a question. When, when I read that passage to start out this message, did that line jump out at you? Yeah. For some of you, it did. His commandments are not burdensome. And that line stuck out for me too. In fact, in the, the Bible that I have, that's my work Bible, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, just it's as heavy as lead with all my notes and prayers and a pencil marks over many years, I've got that underlined. It's a stunning statement. I mean, think about it. God's commandments are not burdensome. And somebody in staff meeting a couple of weeks ago when we talked about this pointed out, you know, what, a, what a, a helpful statement to share with spiritually curious people. God's commandments are not burdensome. Now, when you hear that, is anybody asking this? They're not? <laughs> They're not burdensome? Greek word here can mean heavy or severe. So let's think about this. God's commandments are not heavy, severe. Three weeks ago, if you were here, we had a message called Between Brady and the Bear. You might remember it. We talked about this first, 1 John three sixteen. Listen to this. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. And in that message, I told uh, the boys from our youth ministry who were in the room, I said that at bottom, this verse means more than that, but, but at bottom, the most meat and potatoes meaning of this verse, which is an echo of something that Jesus the Lord said, is this. I said, if you guys are ever hiking together in Yellowstone National Park, 
And a grizzly surges out of the bushes, going right for Zach Cox. And Zach Cox's bear spray misfires. I told the guys in the youth ministry, I said, your job is to get yourselves between Zach and that bear. And then I said, and I mean it. I'm not exaggerating at all. That's what God's word is telling us, okay? Well, let's think about that commandment. That's a commandment, right? Is that not a little heavy? (laughs) To get yourself between your friend and a charging bear? What about this? This past week, Stephen and Susanna Weissong came into the office. He's been gone a little bit on paternity leave, which is wonderful. Showing off this magnificent baby that God has given them. If you have not seen Simon, you are in for a treat. This, this is, hold on to that kid, because a lot of people here would like to take him home, okay? <laughs> My boys need a protege. I was thinking about it. But think about this. What about feeding a squawking newborn in the middle of the night when you are exhausted? Is that not just a little bit heavy? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I almost never did it, but that's a different thing. (laughs) What about this? What about caring for a spouse with dementia? I can think of three hillside men, three hillside mighty men who went to the wall for their wives who were ailing with dementia over many years. Is that not a little heavy? What about spending time with a depressed friend? What about sticking to a budget so that we can give generously to the church? What about committing to being one of the 28 children's team members that we need to get through this next year? We need 28. Serving one hour, two Sundays a month for a year, even if it means being willing to give up the spontaneous trip to Tahoe. Is that not a little heavy? (laughs) Is that not a little burdensome? What about helping a seventh grader with a book report? Let's do the next day. A book the child didn't read, okay? (laughs) I have heard stories about that. (laughs) What about befriending a mentally ill person in the Safeway parking lot and then paying for a tow truck for her? You know, as we know, God's fundamental commandment is to love. Well, these are the kinds of actions love requires, right? Are they really not burdensome? And if they are burdensome, is verse three true? Well, of course, verse three is true. Every word in scripture is true. So what is John actually saying? Let me tell you, John is not saying that LLDL, life laid down love for each other. He's not saying it's easy. Love is almost never easy. If it's love, it's meeting somebody's urgent need and it requires something of us. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying it's not easy in the abstract. He's saying that as believing people, as born of God people, as new people, we have power, we have capacity because of him to climb that love mountain. And it's for that particular reason that God's commandments are not burdensome. It's not for everybody. It's for people who have been born of him. And that that's John's meaning is plain based on the first word of the next verse. Look at it, look at it, verse, verse four. He says, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Emphasis on for. And the Greek word here translated for is also often translated since or because. In other words, God command, God's commandments, especially the commandment to love each other, it's not burdensome because and only because one reason we've been born of God. We're new. We have capacity we never had before. And that's what makes all the difference. You know, a few years ago, you might remember this. The Israeli historian Yuval Noah Harari wrote a book. It was a sequel to the book called Sapiens, which is a bestseller. This was a sequel called Homo uh, Deus. And in this book, he argued that before long, human beings, we all would morph into a brand new species as scientists began implanting chips into uh, our, our, our brains, okay? That is, I, I think, if the chatbots don't uh, take over the world first. Uh, reading a lot about that. Anyway, he argued that homo sapiens, which means wise human, will someday become homo deus, God human. 
Now thinking about that, against the backdrop of 1 John, it occurred to me, John has news for Professor Harari. And it's this, we who have had Jesus implanted into us by faith are already a new human species. We're already different. We are homo Christus. We're Christ human, Christ woman, Christ man. We're already new. We're new because we've been born of God and joined to that God man. Jesus, we have new spiritual life. We've got God's own life coursing through us and it's that life, that power, that person that fuels the obedience, that lights the fuse for greater love for each other. And here again for about the hundredth time we see what the body of Christ means for the body of Christ. It means everything. It means born of God, we can love in ways we've never loved before. So what does this boil down to? Here's what. Number two, to electrify love for God, which we do to electrify love for each other. We obey him. We take his commandment seriously, but we do it in a very particular way. In the power of our new birth personhood. And this always starts with prayer. I am so thankful for the prayer champions at Hillside. Among the many gifts that we have gotten from coming together and becoming a new church, we have gotten a bunch of Navy SEAL prayers from OTC. And I'm noticing this over and over again, this crew constantly calling us to pray, 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 do it. Make it the first thing. Do it with energy, do it with power. You know, Floyd and Jan and Janet have been calling for us to make prayer more central for years. And now they've gotten reinforcements. But here's the prayer that it starts with. We want to live our new birth personhood. Here's the prayer. It always starts with prayer. Everything starts with prayer. Father, thank you for recreating me in Christ. Thank you for joining me to him. Today I resolve to think, act, and love through him. I've been praying that this week. That's one of the great things about getting to do what Wayne and I get to do. You, you get to <laughs> soak in this stuff and then you get to live it and see how true and beautiful and life-changing it really is. Now at this point, we could stop. We could all go home. We could go home for waffles. I don't know about you, but there's a rule in the site's home. First meal after church must involve syrup. Okay, we don't want a Chinese chicken salad. We like that at dinner. But the first meal after church has to involve syrup, okay? Michelle makes amazing French toast. I I do wonder about her capacity with with waffles, okay? (laughs) Anyway, we've identified John's topic, how to increase LLDL for each other. That's kind of what he's talking about. And we've learned that it's to draw on the power of our new new birth personhood, the capacity we have, born again, joined to Jesus. Because that leads to greater obedience. That leads to greater love for God as we experience his goodness in our lives. Whenever we obey God, we experience his goodness. And that leads to greater love for each other. We could go home now, that's a lot. But before we head out, can I ask you one more question? Look at verse four again. Let me read it again, the first phrase. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the the world. Overcomes the world? Now I thought John was talking about increasing our love for the other guys in our Kairos table group. I thought John was talking about increasing our love for the other people in our home group. I thought John was talking about increasing our love for the other people on our Amazing Race 2324 ministry team. But what's he doing here? It's, it's like he's, he's blown miles past that in talking about overcoming the world. And I was thinking about this, this big leap from verse three to verse four, and a scene in a favorite book came to mind. Maybe you've, you remember this if you've read this book. Early in Lord of the Rings, the fellowship passes through uh, an elven kingdom, kingdom uh, overseen by an elven queen. And at the end of this wonderful visit in which they are nourished and encouraged and shown all this hospitality, the queen, Lady Galadriel, gives each member of this fellowship, a bunch of hikers on a big mission, just like us here at New Hillside, a bunch of presents. And two members get silver belts, one gets a golden belt, one gets a bow, a really exquisite bow, 
Uh, the unofficial leader of the fellowship gets this fancy sheath for a fancy sword and this big jewel. The humblest member of the party, Samwise Ganji, gets the humblest gift. He receives a box. And the box has soil in it. And the box has one large seed. Now Sam's a humble guy. And he appreciates the gift. But to the reader... <laughs> The gift of a seed seems pretty underwhelming compared to all the other gifts that the other folks uh, received. Now, if you know the story, you know that what at first seems to be just this paltry kind of lame party favor will prove <laughs> to be something incredible. You see, that seed gift gives Sam the power to undo all sorts of damage in the world and to beautify it. Now, why bring this up? Here's why. Our passage today similarly describes a gift and like Sam's seed, it's a gift with far greater significance than we could ever imagine. It means so much more than just loving each other better. Our new birth personhood, our new homo Christus identity is the catalyst. Yeah, for greater LLDL love around here, absolutely. But according to John here, its capabilities go way beyond that. And here's where we get, which for me is a huge surprise of this passage. Our new birth personhood means world overcoming power. That's what he says. World overcoming power, by which he means power to overcome everything that resists God's good purposes for his world. And that's because being born of God means having the eternal life of the eternal son in us. It's the difference between being weak and being strong. It's the difference between being homo sapien and homo Christos. In Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, Paul says it's the difference between being dead and being alive. And yes, being born of God makes us able to love each other better better than we ever had here at the church, but it also makes us able to pursue every kind of good, every kind of act of justice, every kind of act of creativity that brings nourishment and beautiful beauty to the world outside the church. You know, this past week I was re reminded about someone from our history, a Christian brother uh, from centuries ago who, who demonstrated the world overcoming power of his new birth personhood. And let me tell you the story. Back in the fourth century, uh, church had grown. It was huge. It was the, actually the official religion of the Roman Empire, just a few hundred years after Jesus died and rose again. But right around this time, a bunch of bad ideas about the person of Jesus began to circulate throughout the Roman world. Really destructive ideas. So the, the emperor Constantine, who had become a Christian of some sort, called for a meeting of the worldwide church to try to hash this out. And it's now called the Council of Nicaea. Well, they met, the matter got settled, and the people who were pushing these destructive ideas about Jesus got sent packing. Well, everything was fine for a while until like black mold. These ideas began coming back. And this time, the emperor got captured by them. Again, these were ideas that just contradicted the church's earliest beliefs and contradicted the experience and testimony of the people who died proclaiming Jesus. It didn't make any sense at all. Well, there was this guy named Athanasius and Athanasius w was a bishop and he had been at this big meeting in which the true identity with G of Jesus had been sorted out. And this guy, and he, 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 he wasn't impressive physically, uh, in fact, he was actually disparaged for the way he looks. If you ever felt bad about the way you look, you're not strong enough, uh, you don't have great upper body strength like me, whatever. Um, you, know, you felt a little embarrassed. Athanasius is your guy, okay? And he knew, he saw with crystal clarity that we can't budge on this. He, he understood that if we budge on who Christ is, the real Christ, the Christ of history, the Christ who the apostles experienced, then Christianity was totally lost. And he knew this because he knew that Christianity is Jesus and to lose his particular identity was to lose everything. Well, to put it mildly, Athanasius went to war for the truth 
And he went to war and he kept fighting for the truth, even when it seemed like the whole world was against him. He would not give up. And again, he wasn't impressive. He's even a kind of a, a, a weakling uh, like I am. And for the next 45 years, he battled. And for the next 45 years, he endured five different exiles getting uh, uh, sent away from his home in Alexandria for a total of 17 years. One time when he's preaching, a battery of Roman soldiers came into the church to arrest him and throw him to church. You know what his church family did? They surrounded him. (laughs) They made a big cloud around him, allowing him to sneak out the back uh, into the desert where some friendly monks hid him. And I want to tell you right now, we the staff are hoping that if that ever happens, you will do the same for us, okay? (laughs) Just saying that now. But Athanasius would not give up on the central truth of Christianity, that the eternal son became a human being, and in so doing, he truly overcame the world. And although he didn't live to see it, in 381, there was a second worldwide meeting of the church. And in that meeting, the view of Jesus that Athanasius fought for for 45 years, the view of Jesus that the apostles had and proclaimed and died for became the official position of the entire church and has been ever since the entire Christian church, Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant. Everybody agrees on this. The doctrine that the son of God who became a human being was the divine son and more specifically the eternally divine son of one substance with the Father. But here's what I love about this example. We come up with a lot of examples of, of, of world over, overcoming commitment. But let, think about this one. Athanasius overcame the world by drawing upon the very truth that he was fighting to preserve. The very one. That the eternal son became us. And because he became us, entirely new lives are possible for us. Joined to him. You know, I think our greatest need, boy, I know this personally, greatest need I have, maybe the greatest need we have is to understand, to avail ourselves of our new birth personhood. We are not what we used to be. And like we talked about, you know, born of God, we can obey him more fully. And that leads to loving God more deeply as we see all of his good in our lives. And that in turn leads to loving each other more devotedly. And that leads to supercharged love here at New Hillside. But we also see here in verses four through five, I think the great surprise of the passage, that just loving each other more doesn't even begin to exhaust what new birth personhood really means. Our born of Godness equips us to overcome the world in the grandest sense. Everything that opposes God and his loving purposes for human beings because we have Christ inside us. And for Athanasius, it meant overcoming catastrophically deficient views of Christ. Ideas that if they had won out, the church would have just ceased to be. Views that would kill the church. For Martin Luther, it meant overcoming diminished views of scripture and salvation. For Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Corey Ten Boom, it meant overcoming demonic Nazism. For Martin Luther King Jr., it meant overcoming demonic racial hatred. For Gary Haugen and his crew of the International Justice Mission, the preeminent abolitionist organization in the world today and a Christian organization run by evangelicals, it means overcoming slavery throughout the world. For someone eventually, it will mean overcoming a medical establishment that thinks it's right to perform mayhem on healthy children. For somebody else, it will mean overcoming political movements that say, you know, Sometimes it's okay to do violence to get your purposes across. Until the king comes back, there will always be sinister things, dehumanizing things for Jesus' people to overcome, not with force, but with Jesus' own turn the other cheek love. And thankfully, because of our new birth personhood, we can overcome them. To return to Sam Ganji for a moment, his gift was a seed in a box. And the gift meant everything. You know, he'll end up planting that seed and he will grow a spectacular tree. Guess what? We Christians are all Sam Ganges. Every single one of us. We too have been given a powerful seed. And John says this explicitly in 1 John 3, 9. Listen to this. Those who have been born of God do not sin because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin because they have been born of God. Friend, the seed is Christ. 
And if you know him by faith, that seed is in you. And that seed transforms us all, our basic nature. It turns us from loveless to loving. It turns us from cowardly to courageous. It turns us from homo sapien to homo Christos. And it's something that enables ever more LLDL within Hillside. It really does. But it allows for even more than that. Seeking as God gives us opportunity in our time and place right here to seek his compassionate purposes outside the church as well. That's who we are. That's how we can live. Let's, let's do this. Let's close. Wayne has been encouraging us to, to, to take time in the service seriously as time to explore. And I, I think it's, he's, he's, he's right. Let, let's do this for a few minutes. You know, exploration is a small group practice that we engage in at Hillside. And basically, in exploration, after we have connected, after we've studied the word together, we, 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 we put, close the Bible. And in a, a, a spirit aware mode, a prayerful mode, we ask each other this question. It's a basic question. Because we're disciples. We say to each other, I might say uh, to Don. I might say to Mark. I might say to Ola. How do you sense the living Lord is calling you to follow him? Because that's the question, right? We're disciples. We're following Jesus the King. So here's the question. Let's take 30 seconds, 45 seconds in silence to ask this question in group exploration. How do you sense the living Lord is calling you to use the gift of your new birth personhood. What is he saying? Let's stand together. Father, we are awestruck by the truth of this passage which seems so simple on the surface but which has such depth. We want to live the reason for our redemption. We want to realize the potential of our new birth. We want to seek you and abide in you like the song West led more deeply so that we can obey you more fully, so we can love you more passionately, so we can love each other in a deeper way. And also in our new birth personhood, we want to be courageous and in the distinct style of your son. Advance your purposes in the world, which don't match with anything else on offer at the moment, but are yours and yours alone. Make us brave, make us courageous, make us truthful, make us distinctly Jesus-like in all that you call us to do. Make us one. Thank you, thank you. We pray in the name of Jesus, the one to whom we are joined. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Yeah.
out. Um, help us with our courage this week. Uh, it is tough for us to take these steps. It is tough for me to take these steps, God. Thank you for how you're gracious with us. You forgive us when we kind of go the other way. We hide out maybe, whatever. Um, help us to seek you and realize that the power is there with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah, it's good stuff. So the prayer team, yeah, I see prayer team folks are here. They're really nice. Really nice people that love to pray for you. So come up and do it, okay? Um, rest of y'all have a great Sunday. Stay cool. <laughs>